It is the chilling tale of blind love. I was worried that John was going to kill me to try to get the money because I had married him. And lies. The papers show that John has numerous names, numerous social security numbers. A handsome, volatile con man. He said I was a whore and a bitch and I was going to pay for what I did. He was the most evil person I've, I've ever met and a woman who fell for him. He got into my car, started it, and set it on fire. Setting in motion a chain of events with deadly consequences. At that point, I realized I'm his latest victim. Dirty John tells the story of John Meehan, a master of deception who charmed and tormented his unsuspecting victims, women like Deborah Newell. What do you think, though, when people you know hear your story and think, mm -hmm. well, how did you let this happen? I tell them, you weren't in my shoes. <laughs> Millions listen to the wildly popular Los Angeles Times and Wondery podcast. Is there something about John's past he's trying to hide? Which was then adapted into a hit scripted Bravo show starring Connie Britton and Eric Bana. You think I'm going to let this happen? And now, a new documentary from Oxygen. Someone's been stabbed. It's a girl. In 2014, Deborah had a successful interior design business, beautiful children, and everything that money could buy here on the coast of Orange County, California. I decided that I had it all, except love. That search for a soulmate brought her online, where she met the man who would forever change her and her children's lives. He said everything right. I liked what he had on his profile. He had his daughters. He had animals. Um, that he was an anesthesiologist. The then 59-year-old went on her first date with the tall, good-looking, self-proclaimed doctor at this Houston's restaurant. John started calling every day, and we would meet after work. And he started saying he was in love with me, I was the soulmate, he's been waiting for me. I ate it up. Even though Deborah had only known him for two months, she agreed to marry him while on a trip to Las Vegas. John seemed like the man of her dreams. What kinds of things would he do? Everything. We would take walks at the end of the day and he wanted to hear all about my day. He would make me breakfast. He would take my dry cleaning in, take my mail to the mailbox. So you thought, I have got the perfect husband. I thought so. <laughs> They soon moved into this waterfront home on ritzy Balboa Island. She paid for everything, overlooking red flag after red flag her children picked up on from the beginning. What kinds of things were your kids pointing out to you? The one thing that they noticed is he didn't have a car, and so he was driving one of my cars. But he told me his car, when he was in Iraq, his things got stolen. But John's story about serving with Doctors Without Borders in Iraq was just one fictional tale in a web of deceit he'd woven. I mean, almost everything he told me was a lie. Uh, he told me he was an anesthesiologist. He was not an anesthesiologist. He said he had one sister, and she was dead. He has two alive sisters. Um, everything was, there was no reason for a lot of the, the lies. I didn't understand. John would isolate Deborah from her family in an effort to control every aspect of her life and wealth. Everything came to a head. John was not who I married whatsoever. It was his true nature, something his first wife of almost 10 years, Tanya, is all too familiar with. Sharing in the documentary how she learned that he was a liar and a drug addict. I found on the very top shelf, pushed all the way to the back, a box of anesthesia drugs. Fentanyl and Versed. After the couple split, John made violent threats heard here in these recorded phone calls. Tanya, you enjoy your time left on this earth, okay? Because that's what it's going to come down to. Tanya and her daughter spent years fearing for their lives. I always thought that like he was going to try to like come and get us just to get back at my mom, and I got scared. Someone that he has latched onto is never free of him. Detective Julia Bowman says she's learned of at least 50 victims since first investigating extortion and stalking accusations made against John in 2013. Arresting him after finding cyanide capsules, zip ties, duct tape, a gun and ammo he'd stashed. If we had not arrested him, that something horrible would have happened to our victim. John was released from prison in October of 2014. 
Two days later, he met Deborah and zeroed in. At what point did you start to realize something might be off here? Not until we're married. It would take her more than a year to realize the full scope of John's vicious duplicity. She finally walked away for good, the scene playing out word for word in the Bravo show. I said, I'm leaving you, I want a divorce. Deborah went into hiding for months. Still, he stalked her, finding her car and setting it on fire. It was clear that this guy was really dangerous. Yes. Did you ever think that he would go after your children? I never thought he'd go after my children. What did he have to gain? But that's exactly what he did. John's reign of terror finally came to an unlikely end when he attacked Deborah's youngest daughter, Tara, outside of her apartment building, and she fought back, stabbing him to death in self-defense. For me, it was just surreal. Um, here's your daughter that fought for her life against someone that you thought was the love of your life. Now, more than a year later, Tara is recovering from the trauma and Deborah is reflecting on her family's nightmare. And what are the lessons that you learned through all of this that you hope that other women can learn from you? Do the background. Really try to figure out who this person is. Meet their friends. Never allow them to come to your home until you really know who they are. Um, take your time. Are these all things that you wish you would have done differently? Of course, yeah. I let my heart lead instead of my head. A life-threatening realization of how love can blind you from the dirty truth. How has it impacted your view on love? Are you dating? No. <laughs> I'm not ready. Let's put it this way. I will do everything differently and trusting the right person, yeah. Yeah, because there's good guys out there too. For Nightline, I'm Marcy Gonzalez in Newport Beach, California. Oxygen's documentary, Dirty John, The Dirty Truth, airs Monday night. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.